throttle linkage and throttle position sensing. Let's see how I did it. throttle linkage. So this is one of those cases where uh, I could have can use the RV uh, throttle pedal and whatnot and tie that into the Cummins or maybe use the, the bus uh, pedal and uh, cable and all that stuff but it ended up being a mashup of both. This is gonna be a pretty short video to the point. Uh, so what I ended up doing is uh, using the original uh, gas pedal, accelerator pedal from the RV, um, and then also use the cable that actuates the linkage on the Cummins, and with the both of those, it worked out pretty good. The only, the only issue I had was I had to figure out um, how I was gonna pull that cable, uh, in this case, this uh, gas pedal, the fulcrum, fulcrum is right here, and it's pretty much a one-to-one -one ratio to where the ball end used to be, where the cable snapped onto that ball end and then went to the uh, carb on the 454. Um, the cable pull on this Cummins is m much shorter. The pull length that I have to go from idle to full throttle was seven eighths of an inch, one inch, somewhere in that neighborhood. So obviously I can't put it over here because that would lead to like a one inch amount of travel on the foot pedal, the foot feed. It's not good. Um, I just went in couple of our vehicles and measured the uh, you know how much it deflects and they were all right around the two and a quarter two and a half range so I did the math and translated that two and a quarter inches or two and a half inches from this point to this point and worked it backwards so that two and a half two and a quarter inches of travel here would equal seven eighths at this point so there's also this little bracket that's gonna meet the cable from the school bus it's kinda short um, yeah so that that pretty much covers this then there's also it's kinda hard to see but uh, right here there's holes for it's called a throttle lock or a, a a cable goes through there and there's a um, a lever on the dash where you can manually idle it up or maybe use it for cruise control if you're feeling adventurous I don't I suppose you could but it's kinda like a suicide thing because uh, you gotta manually disengage it anyways that's what I got going on here Let's get this installed and I will get you some pictures of it inside the RV. So here we are in the engine compartment and this is going to be kind of tricky to show but right here that is the believe it or not the size of that thing but that is a bracket uh, for the throttle linkage. Um, can see the cape there's a cable and that's what I reused and that goes underneath and around and up through the floor near the gas pedal or the foot feed and then uh, the cable pulls on oh geez this which in turn pulls on the lever that goes to the 
pump. So pretty basic, kind of crude, but it works. Let's go on the inside now. Boy, this is going to be even trickier, but anyways, so here is the foot feed. Trust me, it's there. You can't see behind the brake pedal here, but the foot feed is there. And then that short lever I was showing you before connects to the cable that's right there. And this is the throttle lock that I was telling you about. But anyways, here it is at idle and full, full chooch, full throttle. And it works great. It's... I'd say it's about right around two and a quarter, two inches, two and a half inches of uh, travel on the pedal. Oh my god. Here's that throttle lock I was telling you about. So that, um, so it's like you can go into high idle. Well, that's actually full bore, but you can, you know, just give it just a little bit of throttle if you want to warm up, whatever, or cruise control. And you can see it actually runs the pedal. that linkage working down there yeah it's hard to see anything but anyways that's old school right there and I also got the engine stop knob installed this is old school there's no solenoids on this it doesn't turn off with the key if you want to shut off the engine you got to pull that knob So that's essentially the fuel cutoff. And that goes somewhere down here. You ain't gonna see it because it's too dark down there, but kind of old school. So the throttle linkage is complete. Now let's talk about the throttle position sensing. Uh, as I had said way earlier on in one of those uh, first videos uh, about which transmission I tro chose, um, this particular one does require throttle position sensing uh, for the transmission to work properly. Uh, so just a brief uh, explanation of that. Um, so, like I said earlier, I am integrating an electronic transmission to a mechanical engine, meaning there's no computers on it. It is solely mechanical and um, no computers. Um, so, the year of transmission that I ended up getting, it's a 2008 Allison 2350 HS. Uh, there's a range of transmissions, it's like three years, that in order to be able to integrate it to a mechanical engine, you do require a throttle position sensor so the transmission knows where you are, where your foot is. Um, in the later years, uh, the later generations of uh, Allison, it requires more inputs, more than the, the throttle position sensing. I don't know what they are. I really don't care. 
but in my case it's the simplest simplest one to integrate uh, I believe that would apply to the five speed Allisons as well they probably only need throttle position sensing so what I'm gonna what I did or what was suggested to me by Jason is to get this uh, universal I guess um, TPS it is from pace performance and it is a universal remote mount uh, TPS let's get that there so that's the actual sensor and you can see there's a crank on it and I will pull the cable and you can see when the throttle is actuated that changes position and changes voltage to the computer of the of the transmission and it's mounted via a cable and I got to tie that into the linkage and this thing is adjustable for length my gosh you can go this is the shortest and you can extend that all the way out so you it gives you a lot of latitude on where you can remotely mount this and then you just tighten up that little gland nut there and that's what I got to integrate uh, what's nice about this one is that um, some transmissions require a decreasing voltage as you push on the gas pedal so from idle to wide open throttle the voltage from the uh, sensor decreases but for this Allison it increases so as you push on the foot feed the voltage signal goes up um, but the beauty of this one is that it can be wired either way so knowing that it gives you a little bit of flexibility in mounting it so you'll see later on on the linkage I got in that um, in the RV it's kind of tight where it's located um, so I'm gonna end up mounting this thing to operate I would say reverse from normal so instead of when I push the gas pedal this gets pulled out when I push the gas pedal it's going to retract so that's where that being able to uh, reverse the polarity of the sensor is pretty handy so it gives you flexibility and it's like it says pretty much universal and this is this uh, is from pace performance and I will uh, I'll put the part number down here um, but yeah so let's get it installed so I got it mocked up I'm uh, pretty happy with the way this worked out. I gotta tell you, I either either I'm the luckiest guy in the world, or I, or I don't know what. But I ended up uh, modifying some of the stuff on here. I mean, I, I reshaped this and uh, filled in. Uh, some of this slot here so I can move the pivot point up so I could attach the little plastic clip there for the TPS and I just kind of made my own T bolt I took a 1032 and um, just ground some of the top off and this little clip snaps right on and then there's this uh, barrel clamp that uh, holds the cable but this this originally was used for the transmission modulator so there was actually originally a cable that hooked up to this and went through that hole and then went down to the transmission and that was the uh, input to that transmission for the AT5405 so it was a mechanical throttle position sensor um obviously this is electronic but this was allowed some freedom of movement which i limited 
So this is now, it just pivots with that T-bolt on there and that allows the cable for the um, TCM to have a straight pull all the time. It won't twist, but it'll be a straight pull. And then you, the spring is connected to there to pull it back. I did, it's still kind of sloppy, but I think I'm going to leave it alone. It was way sloppier than that before. I put some washers in there to uh, take up some of the gap. Otherwise, it looks okay. Let's show you how this thing works. So with all those modifications, I got it reassembled back on my bench and it's just mocked up. And this is where the throttle cable comes through. And then that reattaches. There's a ball end over here. And I got the throttle position sensors right here. And there's the cable that goes through and up, connects here. I used some of their brackets. They send a whole bunch of brackets along with it. It's used for um, attaching to a carburetor. If you need a throttle position sensor on your carburetor, you can adapt it to that. So with all this stuff reattached, if you watch the uh, throttle position sensor, I'm gonna move this through the full range of its motion. So that's at idle. And that's full throttle. So you can see it's not a whole lot of movement in that crank mechanism here. It's about an inch, seven eighths of an inch, but you can see now we got a throttle position sensor. I may do some tweaking with uh, where this attaches to because right now it's going from full at rest to full deflection. But really we want something that's kind of in between so it doesn't go back to rest and fully deflected. You want to get a, a, a range in there where it doesn't do that, but it still satisfy the voltages needed for the uh, transmission controller. There it is again. Full throttle. Idle. All right, let's put a splash of paint on this thing and get it reinstalled. On a side note, I should have mentioned that this uh, throttle linkage bracket is on a commercial Cummins. So if you're swapping a Cummins out of a Dodge truck, I, I don't know how that linkage works. Uh, I don't know if it's similar. I have no idea. But I just thought I'd add that. Um, yeah. This is from a commercial Cummins. So, take that for what it's worth. All painted up. All reinstalled on the engine. Um, the cable goes there. And it's... Mounted remotely, um, had to play with it a little bit. Um, I would have liked to have mounted it a little bit further that way, way but um, the cable was binding, so I had to keep that loop as big as possible. And I also had to bend that bracket just a little bit so that cable could come out straight. Here it is all hooked back up. We're going to leave that cable long uh, for when 
um, transmission tuning comes around because then we'll dial that in. Um, it also doesn't return back to idle all the way. Um, that little bit of extra spring tension on that uh, TPS pulls just enough to keep it off idle, fully seated off of idle. So I'll have to add a spring here or a stronger spring or do what was on the um, the bus and there was an extra spring pulling back on the uh, throttle lever on the pump and it pulls back on the linkage that way that might be the easiest I'll just leave this alone but uh, let's get a few shots of this working Okay, so I'm actually in the cab right now, and that's an idle, full throttle, idle, full throttle. And here's the TPS, idle, full throttle. Idle, full throttle, and that's working in the reverse fashion of how it was intended to work, but it's going to do the trick. So that pretty much covers the throttle linkage and the TPS. Um, wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be. Actually, it went pretty good. Um, and like I said before, I can't speak to if you're using a, uh, the Cummins out of a, a Dodge because the throttle linkage may be different, but it really worked out in my favor uh, the way it was set up for this engine. So, on to the next item, I guess. Thanks for watching.